Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing another watercolor with me video and this time around I'm going to show you guys how to paint these cute little fall watercolor paintings. So let's get started. In this video I decided to use my Utrecht watercolor tubes. Here I listed all the watercolor colors that I used. I like to use a lot of oranges, yellows, reds, and browns for my fall colors. For my paint brushes, I always make sure to use watercolor paint brushes and I am using the smallest ones I could find in my collection. And for paper, I'm just using the B Paper Company Cold Press Watercolor Pad. All I need now is a clean bowl of water and then I just need a pencil and a eraser and then I'm good to go. So the first thing that I'm going to show you guys how to paint is this cute little pumpkin. So I'm just drawing in the lines first, erasing it so that I don't have any harsh pencil lines. And then I'm going to go in lightly with my paints. Um, I'm just starting out with a lighter wash of orange and I'm going to build this up as I go. To make the ridges of the pumpkin stand out, I'm doing alternate layers so that I can let those dry and then go in with the layers that I haven't done yet and this will allow it to not all kind of mush together but it'll actually bring out each ridge of the pumpkin. So I'm sure when you think about a pumpkin you think about the color orange but in reality when you're looking at a pumpkin there's shadows, there's other colors that are kind of tied into it so don't be afraid to build it up and add some more colors like some browns and some reds and this will really bring out the depth of what you're painting. And this is how my watercolor pumpkin turned out. Next I'm going to be painting a cute little plant that just has some fall colors in it. So I'm going to start out with drawing it and then I'm going to go in with kind of like a deeper red. For this color I mixed in some Olazarn Crimson and uh, some raw sienna. I'm going to be alternating between painting the flowers of the plant and the leaves of the plant so that I give um, each one time to dry a little bit before going in again with a, another layer. Notice how I'm focusing a lot of the paint in one certain area and then I kind of do a wash outward and this will create the shadowing effects or the depth that we need for this painting. Now that the leaves are dry, I'm just going to do the little veins of each leaf. And I'm just going to add some wispy, kind of grassy leaves coming out of the plant, and that is it. The next thing that I'm going to be painting is a cute little deer. And I'm going to first go in and just do a little outline of the drawing, and then I'm going to go in with some raw sienna, and you'll even see me going in with some blues for the shadowing. And I'm just kind of building up the color as I go, just like I have been, and I'm going to work up to the antlers. And you want to try to leave some white space, um, especially around the chest area and the nose and the eyes. And that is one thing that I have a lot of trouble with, is um, making sure I keep a lot of white space to work with um, later on in the painting. It's one of those things that's hard to visualize as your first starting out in the painting, but you really need it later. So if you are like me and sometimes you go overboard with the colors and there's not much white space left, there is a way around it that I'm going to be using later on this painting and I'll show you guys how I kind of bring back the white space that I lost in the painting of this. So I'm just going to finish up the antlers and the little ears on my deer and then I'm going to do the eyes and the nose and you really want to make sure that these darker features that I'm doing right now are the things that you want to do last. So basically it's going to be the last thing that you think about when painting this painting. And now I'm doing the cheating part that I was talking about. I'm adding in some bleed proof white to fill in the spaces that I wanted to be a lot wider when I first started out this painting. I'm focusing this white on the chest area, the eyes, the nose, the ears, and then I'm doing some highlights on the antlers. And now I'm just going to go in and put some final touches on my little deer. And I'm actually going in with a black pen to make the features a little bit darker than I had it with the watercolor. And now I'm taking a piece of cardboard and an X-Acto knife 
and I'm actually going to cut out the outsides of these little watercolor paintings that I've been doing. You can also do this with scissors if you don't have an X-Acto knife, but I just like using my X-Acto knife for this. And that is the completion of this little deer. Now I'm going to cut out the pumpkin and the little plant that I did earlier just the same as I did with the deer. And cutting this out like this, it makes it easy to paste it in my bullet journal wherever I want to use it later. Just like in my last watercolor with me, I'm going to be making these um, into a sticker set in my Etsy shop. So if you guys like these and want to put these in your bullet journal, um, then I'll have that in my Etsy shop for you guys. One thing that I love about the fall season is that I get to break out my fall scented candles. So I thought I'd do a cute little painting of a jarred candle. So I'm just finishing up with the outline right now. Once I'm done with this, I'm going to take some darker red and I'm going to make this kind of like a maroon and orange candle. And I kind of messed up here because you really are supposed to do the least um, saturated colors first. So I should have gone in and done the lighter wash of the label and the flame first and then let it dry and then go in with the red. Um, so yeah, this just helps it not bleed as much into the other colors. After I'm done with this, I'm going to outline it with my uniball pen just to bring out the edges of the candle and the ridges and I'm going to draw in the little label. I love how this candle turned out. I love painting tiny little um, items. I think it turns out super cute. And so yeah, I really like this one. Now I'm gonna be showing you guys how to paint a maple leaf. And to paint a maple leaf, you want to start with a color in one area and just kind of change the colors as you go to the next area of the leaf. So I started out with kind of like a yellow brown color. On the top I did a red color. The great thing about maple leaves is that they're super colorful and you can kind of throw in this color anywhere you want. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing. And yeah, I'm mostly using um, reds and oranges and then I'm throwing in some yellows and greens in it as well. Once I let this dry, I'm going to go in and do the stem of the leaf. And then for the veins of the leaf, I'm going in with that same color but more of a lighter wash and I'm going to fill in these veins with a tiny little precision watercolor brush. And after I am done with that, I'm just cutting it out and that is the completion of my little maple leaf. Another thing that I love having during the colder fall season is a nice cup of hot chocolate. So I'm going to paint this cute little mug full of hot chocolate. I'm first just drawing out the outline of the mug. I kept messing up on the handle of the mug so um, I would definitely suggest looking at a reference picture or um, an actual mug to kind of get an idea of how it's supposed to look. When I go in with watercolor, I'm focusing the most saturated watercolor towards the outside of the mug and I'm going to do more of a wash in the middle. And this kind of gives it that cylindrical effect to it. I'm kind of sticking to the same maroon color throughout the painting and possibly throwing in some browns to make it a little bit darker as I go. And then I'm just going to do the upper ridge of the mug and I'm going to fill in those darker spaces where I think shadows should lie. Now I'm going in with the raw sienna for the hot chocolate part. And then I'm going to add some speckles to my little mug by doing kind of a splatter painting effect. But you should definitely, when you do this, use a different brush. I used too small of a brush and it kind of came out um, a little more dirty looking than I was hoping but that's okay. I'm just gonna add some highlights to it and then I'm going to write my little cozy logo in black pen and yeah. Now I'm just gonna cut it out really quick and this is my final little hot chocolate mug.
This next painting is going to be the last painting I'm going to be doing in this video. I'm going to be doing kind of like a rounded autumn leaf painting for you guys. And I'm basically just going to be going in with a deeper orange color. And to get this deep orange, um, I am using a mixture of red and orange and some raw sienna. And this is one of my favorite colors to use for fall leaves. I'm going to be doing some red along the outside and putting in some yellow um, in the middle. And then I'm going to be filling in the stem with a darker uh, brownish red color. As I'm doing this, I'm making sure that the first layer doesn't dry completely before doing the second layer so that I can build up the color without it looking uh, choppy or like there's multiple layers to it. I kind of want it to be more of a washed effect. And this is how my little autumn leaf turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me paint all these cute little fall paintings. Um, I'm definitely going to put these as a sticker set in my Etsy shop by the time this video goes up. So check that out and if you guys end up trying these little paintings for yourself, definitely tag me in any photos you put on Instagram. And if you haven't already, check out my October plan with me video for more fall inspiration. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video.